Welcome to the show. Hello, how you doing? I'm doing great. I'm just really excited to meet and, and speak with you today. Thank you so much. Thanks for supporting. I absolutely do support. And before you came on, I was talking about this other film called The Woman, and I didn't realize that that's tied into your your new movie, Darlin'. So I'm excited for it. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, it's. I definitely wrote it to um, for the woman fans as well and, and also wrote it as a standalone sequel. So it's a funny thing. It's like if you've seen The Woman, I'm so excited for you to see this movie. And if you haven't seen The Woman, you can still watch it after you've watched Darlin' because it stands on its own, you know. Oh, OK. I see. Now, the trailer for Darlin' looks awesome. What made you want to do what is a sequel or standalone sequel, however you want to phrase it, uh, to the woman, Darlin'. What made you want to take part in that? Well, it was really a case of the producer from the from the last film coming to me and saying, we're ready to do the sequel. Would you like to direct it? And I said, fantastic. Who's written the script? And they said, well, it's not written yet. We're going to get somebody to write it. And I said, well, that would be me, please. And so, so that's how it happened. Um, I was very excited to sort of get back under that skin of the woman. She's such a great character. There's so much freedom in her and so much ferocity. And I was excited to bring that to the scripts, you know. And, uh, and my fascination was with Darlin, the little girl at the end of the woman who again if you haven't seen she's presented for the first time as a teenager coming out of the woods she's been raised in the wild she's coming into society for the first time and I thought what would it be like at that stage in your life when so much is changing and you're really coming into your own um, to find that your way of life is entirely going to be questioned you know um, because I think teenagers feel that anyway you know they feel that they're being that they're being questioned and they want to rebel you know against what's in front of them and so I just thought it was an exciting time in her life to bring her out of the woods and bring her into society and see how she how she fared there something I, I noticed from the trailer and gives a, a unique spin to this follow-up is I, I I saw Jerry from The Walking Dead. Yeah, Cooper Andrews plays Tony, this nurse in the hospital, and he's really kind of like a father figure to Darlin in the film. Um, he's incredibly warm in it, and what a fun guy to work with. He's just a, a dear friend. Um, but we've also got Tamiel and Brion as well from Jadis's Junkyard. Um, Jadis is right and left on The Walking Dead. They're also in the film playing a prostitute and a cardinal, respectively. Um, so it's it's a bunch of Walking Dead family together, yeah. So I'm curious. Of course, many know your, your face from being an actress, but as you mentioned on this new film, Darlin', you are directing it, you wrote it. So as an artist, what do you prefer, the acting, the writing, or the directing? It's very hard to separate the three when you're doing all of them in the same project. But I'd say I never want to stop acting. That's, you know, that's a great love of mine. And I'll continue to play interesting roles where I find them. But being a director is 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 just such a wonderfully challenging and exciting role. Um, you know, the role of leadership, of problem solving, of kind of shepherding a community of people, um, of getting the joy of seeing people's incredible hard work and talent and and you know bringing a film in on time even that's exciting to me so uh, yeah i definitely uh definitely feel like a storyteller from a director's perspective is something i i could never give up now i've started <laughs> well i'm really glad you decided to take on this challenge because i was such a big fan of the first film thank you me too now regarding the walking dead don't worry I'm not going to ask where you're taking Rick. Up, up, up. <laughs> That's where I'm taking him. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Helicopters go up. But the question in regards to The Walking Dead that I, I want to ask, uh, well, first, are you familiar with the Six Degrees of Separation game or sometimes known as Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon? Yeah, totally. All right. Well, on this show, we do Six Degrees of Guns N' Roses Bacon. Okay. Now, it was a year or so ago that Slash admitted that he submitted an original song to The Walking Dead, but sadly it was rejected. So I'm curious, one, did you know about that? Well, I, I saw it because you posted about it. So the reason I know is because of you, but I didn't know before. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know before. Um, 
So, because, you know, I, I, I love a bit of social media and I love to see what's going on. Um, and of course, with the film coming out, I'm especially checking up on things. So I saw that and I was like, oh, I had no idea. Um, I think the music on the show is amazing, but I would really have loved to hear what Slash did as well. I have a small Slash connection. Do you want to hear it? Of course. That's the name of the game. I was once in Austin, Texas, in an elevator with Slash. That's it. <laughs> too funny now when you meet somebody whether it be slash or another celebrity do you do you fangirl out at all because i'm i'm a bit of a fanboy at times i mean, yes i'm a professional but at times you know if you meet somebody or i'm going to interview somebody i do get nervous so is there anyone that you've kind of been starstruck before before I think I'm probably like everybody else you know it depends on who you're seeing like I'll never forget being at I was at this event for Cloris Leachman's uh, 60th anniversary of her work a few years ago um, that wonderful character actor who's been in everything and uh, and I and Dick Van Dyke walked in the room okay. now this isn't you know this is a much older man and uh, I was I was I had to lean against a wall I was so starstruck and I didn't I was it was kind of unexpected but I think with 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 somebody like him you know there's just such a warmth about him and there's such a connection to your childhood you know Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and Mary Poppins um and I just I just I couldn't have possibly spoken to him I mean I could hardly stand up you know it was the same when I passed Sigourney Weaver in a back corridor of um Comic-Con a couple of years ago I I literally just had to hold on to the wall because she's She's had such an influence on my life, you know. So I get the fangirl thing. I get being starstruck completely. Um, but I'm I'm not very likely to to go and say hello. Um, like to leave people to do their thing. Uh, but I did see Henry Winkler in the lobby of a hotel in Miami the other day, and I did have to do a curtsy. Again, I didn't know I was going to do it, but that's what happened. <laughs> I just had to do a curtsy, mouth a thank you, and then walk off to the loo round the corner. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Doing a curtsy to the Fonz. <laughs> now, that is something that not many people could say. <laughs> you know, I would have been starstruck if you were in studio today. I know you're in our L.A. studio, so I'm not as nervous as I probably would have been. Now, you know, now that you know that Slash is a fan of the show The Walking Dead, is that something that maybe in the future – you want to see more of because there seems to be a mix a nice mix uh, between the genres of rock and roll and horror and i like when those two worlds meet yeah oh that would be super cool that'd be super cool it's so exciting for me to work with music and film as well we've got our soundtrack coming out at the same time as the film um and it was such a pleasure working with, you know, with Ali Helwin, who scored it. And then we've got like Dorian Electra, who's an amazing musician, um, who does our closing song. Um, and we've got Summer Camp, a great Scottish band on there and uh, and um, art mechanics as well. So there's a lot of lot of female voices in the singing, in the tracks. And then this wonderful Ali, who's a dude who who scored the whole thing as well. So. Yeah, man, if I could get to collaborate with Slash, I mean, I'm down. Does he listen to this podcast? Can we hang out? <laughs> I don't know. It's it's uh, easier to interview you than uh, one of the Guns N' Roses guys. Let me say that. Okay. <laughs> hey, we'll put it out in the universe. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, Pollyanna, I know you got to run. You're doing a ton of press this morning. Uh, thank you so much for your, your time. I can't wait to see Darlin. I can't wait to see what happens with your character on The Walking Dead. You're always welcome back. And just thank you so much for speaking with me today. Thank you so much, mate. I really appreciate it. <laughs>